I was on a compilation album of baseball songs called Diamond Cuts. There's a whole series of them. And uh, my friend Chuck Brodsky, who writes a lot of baseball songs, he connected me with this guy because I had one baseball song uh, called Bigfoot in the Door about a Greensboro ball player. So he got me on that record. It was a cool record, man. It, um, you had songs by Bob Dylan and Paul Simon, all baseball songs, uh, different artists. That, and, I, you know, I got my song on there, which was really cool. It's I called, always... it's called uh, Bigfoot in the Door, about a baseball player named Tom Austin, A-L-S-T-O-N. Uh, he was from Greensboro, just south of here, go, a little community called Goshen. And he had five brothers. There were five brothers. He had four other brothers that all played baseball, but he was the only one that made it to the major leagues. And uh, so it goes like this. A big time, Austin. He swung a baseball bat, broke in with the Cardinals, first black man to do that. 1954, a Bigfoot in the door, Augustus Bush, the beer tycoon, made a big production, beer and silver spoon. Just one black man was standing in the room. Give you two Stan Musials, one Steve Bilko, throwing country slaughter. If you let Austin go, a big time Austin, Cardinals 54. Seen him yesterday, down at the Woolworth store. A big time Austin, he went to Dudley High, played ball for the Aggies. Learn to catch our flies. Big Tom was a slugger, kiss Greensboro goodbye. San Diego Padres, 23 home runs. And RBIs, Big Tom got 101. Headed for St. Louis, the segregation. Give you two stand usuals, one Steve Bilko. Throwing country slaughter, if you let Austin go. A big time Austin, Cardinals 54. I seen him yesterday, down at the Woolworth store. along big Tom Austin in a third class coach the whole season long just like Willie Mays and Jackie Robinson voices in the wind down in Mexico our big forgotten friend back in Greensboro eating apple pie down at the Woolworth store Give you two Stan Musials, one Steve Bilko, throwing country slaughter. If you let Austin go, a big time Austin, Cardinals 54. I seen him yesterday down at the Woolworth store. There were several local connections that Bruce brings up in the song. Among them is Woolworths, an establishment synonymous with the civil rights movement in the 1960s. Woolworths is a, was a five and dime store that my grandmother uh, used to take me to. You know, we'd go in there when we were downtown. There's a place where a lot of people shopped. And of course, there's the civil rights story. That's, if you just mention that name, it invokes certain, um, a certain story. You know. You just have to say the word. And so I, I tried to work that in. And again, I try not to beat people over the head with 
issues. I try to tell a story and let them decide what they want to think. Uh, but that's definitely a song about race, which, you know, we're still dealing with it. Yeah. You know. And how long ago did you uh, write that? I wrote that song, must have been in the 80s. Must have been in the 80s. Uh, I think I wrote it while I was in uh, the MFA program, actually. Well, it was interesting because uh, uh, Tom Austin died maybe 15 years ago. Uh, but after he died, his brother, one of his brothers, called me and said that he, somebody had played that song for him and he liked it and that he uh, thought I did a good job on it, which I was happy to hear that. So I sent him a copy of the record. Yeah. And that's beautiful. I mean, um, <laughs> wow. That's interesting where a song will take you. You know, one song. You know, it, it, it can it can do a lot of things. From beginnings mean and vulgar, with nothing but a bat, Babe changed the game of baseball, yet still remained a brat. Success couldn't change him. He never did grow up. I wrote a song about uh, Babe Ruth, the great Bambino. And that was kind of cool because you almost told America's story in that song. Yeah, yeah. Well, he is America, isn't he? <laughs> I mean, you know, the, the rugged individualist, you know, who, uh, you know, drinks beer and eats hot dogs and he goes out and he's got a big belly, but he can still hit the ball over the fence. Um, and he had an interesting life too, you know, his background. And you talked about the, the changes of time and media. It's amazing to think what would happen if he was around in 2015. What, what would Sports Center say about him if he was playing for <laughs> right. the Yankees today? <laughs> right. <laughs> and in the same way, uh, uh, Dylan, I mean, someone said this very, I can't remember if he was on like Sound Opinions or something, but they said if Dylan went before American Idol, they said that, uh, you know, they tell him to get off, he's too nasally, he's terrible, like, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's just amazing to think that these influential people and what we've been like if they were here today well it is hard to picture bob dylan singing on american idol you know the, the whole thing of a of a contest to make a career is kind of, has always been kind of strange to me because when we started playing like playing out gigs like in the 60s the the whole point was to get out and uh you know like a, a journeyman you know try to learn your craft by going out and doing it and writing and playing and you know you expected it was going to take decades but now you see people that are big stars you know on tv and because of certain people that take them and make them a star you know um i guess this is as as it always has been you know like a, a lot of really good stuff is not necessarily popular you know um, <laughs> yeah sometimes you have to dig for it well, I was reading a book about Billie Holiday and how, uh, you know, her song, um, Strange Fruit, you know, nobody wanted to play that. It was just too serious. It wasn't happy enough. And, you know, and now it's a classic, so. Rosalita, when that cold wind blows. When I always dream of you, Rosalita, when that train comes through, I'll be on my way home to you. I'll be tying on my highway shoes. I'll be flying on home to you. So don't be blue, Rosalita. Do you remember me, girl? Walking along Tobacco Road Going fishing In the Carolina moon Wild mama She cooked us up a meal And I'll be tying on my highway shoes and I'll be flying on home To you So don't be blue Rosalita, 
my little baby girl. Tell mama that daddy's coming home. Rosalita, my little baby girl. I ain't never more gonna roam. And I'll be tying on my highway shoes. I'll be flying on home to you. So don't be blue. Rosalita, when that cold wind blows, it's when I always dream of you. In this song, Rosalita, you can feel the song for how personal it is. He brings this song home for the audience. Yeah, you know, there's an old thing. Uh, somebody said, um, you know, play them the way you feel them. And that's the only way I know how to do it. I, you know, I write my own material, and so naturally I'm close to it. And every time you go out and play for one person or an audience or whatever, you need to bring that feeling and emotion that you have for that song and that story every time. Yeah. Bob Dylan recently did uh, an album of Frank Sinatra songs. Mm -hmm. and he admired Frank Sinatra for his ability to sing to the audience, not at the audience. And mm -hmm. I'm kind of feeling the same thing with you. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks. That's a real compliment. You know? um, and I do that. Um, you know, when you play particularly if you're playing solo, there's this communication between you, and it's exactly what Sinatra did. He, he talked to people through the lyric of the song, and it's a different kind of singing than you see a lot nowadays, you know. People show a lot of emotive energy, but they're not necessarily talking to you, you know, or <laughs> they're not telling you something. That, uh, but Sinatra sure did that, and, and you know, Dylan does that as far as I'm concerned. Um, and people like Billie Holiday, singers like that, Sam Cooke. The change is going to come, you know. That, that's talking to me, man, you know. This is a, a book of my poems that was published in 1995. It's called Honky Tonk Stradivarius. And uh, it, this lady, Suzanne Martin, makes these homemade books. They're, they're hand set on a printing press. She did another book of mine called Fiddlers and Middlers, uh, which came out more recently, but this was the first book. And, you know, I, I usually have, the reason I'm having trouble with the title is because I only put out two books and they're like about 15 years apart. <laughs> so, but this is a poem that I wrote when I was in uh, the MFA program. And uh, I used to work as a land surveyor as my day job in the day, you know, when, and when I got married, um, it looked like that's what I was going to be doing for my career. And uh, so this is called Don't Like No Poultry. I don't like no poultry. It don't make no sense, says Coy, the party chief at work. Them poets think they're better than us, but they brought it on themselves. Well, I agree, a lot of poetry don't make no sense, but neither does swinging a bush axe in a thick pine forest with a minus 30 degree wind chill factor, even if I did bring it on myself. My axe rings out through the echoing forest as I swing in conversation with God. Poetry at last. I daydream while I work of those bodacious women back in poultry class and scheme of taking a powder, walking off this job for cigarettes and never coming back. But there's bills to pay before I sleep, and babies at home now. I walk back to the instrument, take a backside on Manus Man, and turn an angle to shake and bake on an EIP, taking care of general business to support a poultry habit. After work back home, I sing and pick a Martin D28 for my 10-month-old son while he plays at his Busy Bee Activity Center. He good as gold. He likes my poetry. Beautiful. Uh, well, it's been a pleasure, Brian. You know, when you called, I hadn't met you before, and I didn't know whether this would be worthwhile, but it's been really good, and I enjoyed it. Well, thank Thanks you. for having me. Oh, yeah, thank you.